Are you ever in a situation where you have to lead a video shoot or a photo shoot, but you're not a photographer or a videographer? In this Word Made Digital tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to have an amazing shoot day, even if you've never led one before and you're not a videographer or photographer yourself. Hey my friends, my name is Joanna. I'm from Word Made Digital and we do tutorials every single week brought to you by Compassion Canada and the Canadian Centre for Christian Charities. We're doing this because we want to support you, the local church, the local Christian organization, and everything you do to do with communications, media, and leading in the digital age. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how do you run a photo shoot or a video shoot when you aren't a videographer or a photographer, so you don't think that way. I've got a few tips for you coming up. Tip number one, have a shot list prepared. What I mean by that is a literal list on your phone or on a piece of paper that you can begin to check off of every single kind of shot that you want. For example, you want a wide shot, you want a shot close up, you want a shot of their hand, you want a shot from behind, you want a shot from the side. Whatever the list is of things you need from video or photography, make a list because when you're in the shoot and on the job, there's so many things going on. If you don't have a checklist, you're probably gonna forget. And the shot list makes sure that the videographer or photographer knows and gives confidence to them that you know what you're doing, but also they feel like they've done exactly what they've been asked to do. Number two, I want you to think about clothes, hair, and makeup. Why? Because the videographer or photographer they can't think about all of that at the same time that they're doing their video work. So invite people to bring a few outfits in case uh, one of them doesn't look right on camera or maybe they clash with the other people who are on camera. You wanna think about if people's hair is out of place or there's something funky going on. You are in charge of thinking of that or assigning that to someone who is not the videographer or photographer. They've got enough else to think about. That's your job. Number three, location, location, location. If you can, if at all possible, Go to the location in advance of the shoot day. Do a scouting trip. Maybe it's to a local park or maybe it's to uh, film in somebody's house, but before the day where the whole team arrives with the people who are in the shots and the camera gear and all that kind of stuff, you wanna make sure it's actually gonna work. You wanna make sure uh, that the sound isn't gonna be disturbed by a highway if you're trying to record or there isn't crazy echo in the room uh, that by cavernous ceilings that you could uh, fix if you knew that in advance or maybe you need to think about if you're even allowed to film there or maybe you wanna go with your shot list that we talked about and actually write down on a list of the places you think would be great ideas of where to film in advance. Location matters so much in a shoot. And of course you always wanna think about too, what happens if the weather changes, um, not just a location, but also an alternate, alternate location or an alternate day if the location isn't gonna work out on the day that you've chosen. Number four is all about the people that are needed. I wanna turn it over to my friend, James Adams, who leads Visual Media Church. And he's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the people that you wanna think about having on a set and a few other tips from him as a professional videographer and photographer who I've worked with in church ministry for years. And he's gonna to talk to us a little bit more about these tips. If we're going into a film shoot together, what's something you wanna know from me beforehand? I mean, I definitely want like there to be a plan. Like one of the most frustrating things with any video shoot is if you're going in and just kind of hoping to like figure it out on the fly, that's never the way to go about it. And the other thing is just to like be organized, right? Like, especially on video shoots, like I think we, everyone has seen video shoots and commercial shoots either happening in their town or on TV and they're large crews. And the reason why they're a large crews is not because they're trying to spend as much money as possible, but because they're trying to be organized and everyone has a job and everyone has a role. So on church shoots, for the most part, in our experience, Joanna, when working together is we were still really small, but we kind of had clear roles. And so my role was always just trying to make sure we got the shots and was kind of achieving what the creative team's vision was for that specific shoot. And so I was worrying about a lot of things like timing on weather and sunlight and making sure the image looks good and making sure we're capturing audio. The other thing that is really important for a communications person is just keeping it organized and keeping it not getting crazy. Like, I think there's a few shoots that we did where we had, you know, five, six, seven, like young adults. And they're, while they're waiting for something to be set up, people start clowning around and things can get really chaotic. And so that's where like the communications person, it is really important to kind of manage people and make sure it's not getting crazy 
because that just leads to more like frustration from the video side of things when people are not listening and it's you have to like, raise your voice in order to get people's attention and it just becomes it, it actually hurts the quality overall if people aren't there and it's kind of um it can still be fun but leaning towards like this is work mode like we're trying to accomplish something that's hard to do and we want to have the quality be as high as possible so yeah really kind of reining those people in and also yeah being organized with here's what we're gonna do and here's how much time we have like I, I've been on a lot of shoots where they go an hour, two, three hours longer than expected. And it's basically just down to organization. That's really the main problem. Now, one of the things you mentioned was you just named like a bunch of stuff you as a filmmaker are having to think about on the set. Talk a little bit about like you're not thinking about what their hair or their clothes look like or if they're saying the right words. Like you're just trying to get the shot. Can you say something about like not putting that onto the video guy? There, there's definitely lessons to be learned by looking to the people that do it at the highest levels, right? So when you look at people that make movies or commercial shoots, there, there's always a director and then there's a DOP and a DOP is director of photography. So the reason often why they're not together is just getting a good looking image is often hard enough. A director is more um, trying to bring out performances from people. So that can be really translated um, to a church shoot is understanding that you can't put all the responsibilities on the video person or the photographer to one, make a good composition, get the shots you're looking for, make sure the hair is right, make sure the outfit isn't slightly tucked in on one spot where it shouldn't be. There's there's so many things going on that it's it's too much for one person, especially the person who's running and operating the camera to be able to kind of keep track of all that. And that's where you as a communications person need to think of yourself probably more like a director, right? Like you are the person standing back and overlooking things, looking for details. You have time to kind of process that. Whereas your director of photography or your videographer or camera person is the person kind of just trying to make sure that it looks good from a composition standpoint, lighting, all of that. So it's, it's really important to also have that conversation with your video person or your photographer person or both and say like, here's your role and here's what I'm going to take care of. So you kind of understand what each each other are kind of doing on the shoot so that it doesn't kind of get lost in the weeds and later you realize, oh, we made a big mistake, right? Do you have anything around like some stuff that you just think is always good to have for someone like me to bring to a shoot? There's stuff absolutely that the communications person or the director should be thinking about bringing on these small shoots. It is absolutely bring at least some water because people are going to get thirsty. You don't know how long necessarily you're going to be there. It's also making sure that you remind the people that are going to be in your video to bring clothing options. Um, because the last thing you want is someone to make a choice about what outfit they're going to wear. And it's either not appropriate for the video you're doing or you does it, it clashes with the other people. So ask them in a nice way to bring options and then you can decide at the shoot um, what they're going to wear. It's nice to have at least three options. Um, because sometimes, yeah, you don't want someone to wear a, a muted tone or a bright, a bright color because it just doesn't work for what you're shooting. So yes, water, um, appropriate clothing. It's also important to make sure you get releases. That's often something the director should do. Um, if you're gonna have these videos be either on the internet, on your website, just because you know the people doesn't mean that you shouldn't get some consent forms for displaying their face. Cause you, you wanna make sure that even if they're comfortable in the moment, that afterwards they might change their mind or they might might move on to something else and not actually want to be in the video. So you need to have that kind of documented at the start. That's really, really important. I hope that content from James was helpful to you. One of the things that you're maybe getting a sense of from him and I as we talk is you want to over communicate, send more emails with more details than you think are necessary so that everybody who shows up on the day feels confident about what their job is, that they have everything that they need and that they understand the goal that you're trying to achieve out of the shoot. One of my last tips is make it fun. This could be an amazing way to build community, to connect with people in the church community or in the community that you're trying to serve. Uh, making it fun includes things like bringing snacks. Maybe if it's a photo shoot, you don't want dead air, so you wanna put on some music so it makes it a little bit less awkward because people can be really self-conscious when their photo is being taken. So you wanna think about some ways to make it fun. Maybe you wanna take people out for pizza afterwards, whatever you could do that's appropriate to make sure that everybody involved has a great time on the set and feels comfortable doing what they're doing. My last tip is just simply be clear about deadlines. You wanna communicate with the video 
person or the photographer what your deadlines are and what your expectations are for how to receive those files. You want to do that in advance of the shoot so that they know if you want the raw files, if you want edited files, if you want uh, a short deadline, quick turnaround for a few photos or all the photos, or whatever it is that you want, make sure that you talk about that while you communicate in advance so that everybody knows when they leave that day, the job isn't done and they know when they need to get things to you. I hope these few tools and tricks and ideas are gonna help you feel more confident going into your next video shoot or photo shoot as someone who isn't a videographer or photographer. That's like me on the shoot, I'm in that role. I'm neither one of those things, but over the years I've done a ton of shoots at church and beyond in all kinds of contexts, and I've had to learn what videographers and photographers are looking for and how to make a shoot come together in an amazing way. So I hope that you're encouraged by this. We're gonna come back with you every week with more tutorials. Check out the list, check out wormadigital.com for more information. But also just a huge shout out and thank you to our sponsors who are making this possible. They're bringing these videos to you for free uh, so that you, the Church of Canada and beyond can be equipped in communications and media. So thank you so much to Compassion Canada who loves and serves with and through the local church. And thanks so much to the Canadian Centre for Christian Charities who serve the local church. And if you become a member there, I encourage you to check out how they can help you with all kinds of equipment that maybe you don't have on your staff already to do with HR and legal resources and all kinds of things. I want you to check them out at the links below and we'll see you next week in the next tutorial.